This is day three. So I've got my Flash Gordon head here. I went ahead and again trimmed out the yellow and now I'm ready just to marry that up. Now we have our registration here from our black stencil and now I'll just overlay the yellow and you'll see that you get a pretty close if not almost perfect line up there. So now all I need is my trusty paint can. And I need my other tools that I did not bring forward, such as, again, my scissors, my X-Acto knife, and the squeegee. So here we're going to go. Uh, we feel pretty confident here. Again, I'm lining up more on the registration marks. Uh, which is extremely close to actually being at the end here for the stencil. But really at this point, I, I've already put my black stencil down, I've painted it, and i really rather match that up there with a the stencil registration. And if it is a millimeter this way or a millimeter that way in terms of already been painted on the cabinet, I don't care. I'm more interested in making sure I'm lining up with those marks. So I feel like I am. Now I'm ready to begin the stencil transfer. Now, as I showed in the part one video with the black, I'm still going to repeat the same process. I want to make sure that the stencil is not stuck to the bottom, uh, the piece of blue paper that we're going to actually transfer the stencil to the, the head. I want to pull that back eh, about a third or so. Um, again, here it doesn't necessarily matter. You just want enough to make sure it sticks. And then here, I'm going to go ahead and cut off Blue paper, move that out of the way. Get my tool. Again, light, but uh, excuse me, firm uh, pull here, and then just apply the stencil. Once that's done, I can go ahead and remove the paint can. And proceed with the rest of the stencil. I'm going to bring my scissors up here just in case I want to cut this. Uh, I, I don't know if I will need it or not, but you never know. It's good to have your tools handy. This stencil for the yellow for Flash Gordon is not as intricate as the black. I'm not as concerned about it sticking uh, incorrectly, you see it's a very big stencil uh, in terms of what I'm transferring, in terms of what I'm painting. The black was uh, a lot more open area, so this is not as, uh, I would say, as intense of a moment as it was with the, uh, with the, uh, the black stencil. Making sure I get that nice and just go ahead and take this all the way out. Get to the valley area again. It gets a little bit more tricky. Let's see here. Am I actually grabbing some stencil? I am. I had a little area right there that I, I grabbed. All right, now that I've got the stencil down, I wanna have my X-Acto knife close, and now I'm gonna take off the transfer paper on the top, leaving the stencil behind. Again, sometimes it's good to start at a corner uh, and try to get that corner off the transfer paper, starting getting a complete edge and then working down. So let me see if I can't grab this corner.
So I start, I want the entire corner off this stencil before I pull. Now I feel like I've got the stencil down, and now I'm just going to slowly pull. Set that right there because it's not going to stay. So as I'm doing this, I'm watching this corner and make sure I don't see any white stencil come with. So I'm going to go a little bit slow, pretty firm pressure here in terms of pooling. Right here on this transfer registration, it's getting a little stuck, a little torn, not a big deal. Just want to make sure I get that out as good as I can. There we go. So one stencil on. Now let's do the other side. I do want to show before I do that, remember there was a little bit of red right here that uh, pulled up. And you see here, instead of touching this up early, I went ahead and left it alone. And you'll see it, that yellow is going to cover that little bit of, of pool that we did last time on the black stencil. So always good, do your touch up to the very end, don't waste the time because you may be touching something up that gets later, later covered by the stencil itself. You could always use a tack cloth to kind of clean this up before applying the stencil. I don't see that as a necessary thing right now. It's pretty clean. Uh, let's just check the camera in just a little bit so we can see it better. All right. And now we have the next stencil. So again, just checking my transfer area. That seems to be good. That seems to be good. Place my paint buckets. Now see there, I wasn't paying that much attention, and I ended up getting a big, a big rip. Now that's going to be okay, because I'm going to make sure that uh, I feel that, feel that back in. But let's, uh, let's show where I made a mistake here. Okay, so let me get my X-Acto knife. See if I can't resolve this. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so let's show where I made a little bit of a mistake. So if we look here, this, and I need to actually fix it, this right here actually lifted on the transfer. I didn't see it, and I kept pulling, and I pulled all the way down to here. And you can see there's a little bit of a wrinkle here, a little bit of a, a tear there and a tear there. But I was able to see it in time and be able to still resolve it. So I'm going to try to clean up this little corner with my X-Acto knife, get it back into shape. Spraying this, I don't think it's going to matter. I caught it early enough that it actually, I was able to reapply it down, and I don't think that's going to be a big deal. So just be careful as you take that transfer off to watch this area. And I may actually cover this with a little bit of frog tape just to make sure that it doesn't actually bleed through the stencil. So I will do that here in just a moment. First, I'm gonna fix, see if I can fix this little corner. There we go. Exacto blades are sharp, and I just cut myself. So that was great. All right, so all I need to do now is to get this up on my sawhorses, uh, do the masking as I did in the first video, and paint this. So just as I was getting ready to paint, it started to sprinkle and rain outside. So moved it a little bit more inside, and uh, I'm trying to get this done before the big thunderstorm comes. So I think, as I said on our other video, definitely spend the time getting your prep work done, getting everything put together. Uh, you don't want any overspray, especially when you spray a color like yellow. It's going to look weird if it gets somewhere it's not supposed to get. So the more prep time you do, the better the finished product's going to be. All right, I've also chose a specific type of yellow, uh, the uh, <clears throat> Ultra Cover 2X. I like this a lot more than some of the gold that I've seen. I think it's gonna help pop a little bit more. So if you don't like it, it's tough because this is what I'm using. Here we go. All right, so went ahead and put on the coat here first of yellow. I can definitely say it's not covering as well as I thought it would. 
Uh, I'm going to probably wait just a couple minutes, come back, and then apply maybe a, a quick second coat of it. It's going to get out a little bit thicker without it running. So we're going to wait, and uh, once we let this dry, we'll come back and uh, take off the stencil. All right. All right. So I, I don't know exactly what went wrong here, but I've had some paint not only run, but I'm getting a lot of speckling where paint's not really adhering to the surface. So not real for sure what happened there. I don't know. Using the same paint didn't happen all over the place. It just happened specifically around the valley area. So don't know. Some contaminant got in, rubbed up against something. I don't know. So I may have to come back and touch that up later. But, you know, at this point, what can you do? You've already sprayed. You, you, you just kind of have to go with it. So let's take it off, see what it looks like, and we'll go from there. It's been about, uh, for those looking at home, about 12, 13 minutes. So we'll start with this side first. So I'm going to pause right here. Uh, I can tell by this it's not close to being completed. Um, it's still extremely sticky and not in a good way. So I'm going to actually pull this back, kind of tuck this under. And I'm going to wait a little bit longer. It's not ready to pull. Uh, and the way you can see that here is if I look at this top one, uh, we're getting a lot of strings. It's a little hard to see, and I apologize. We're getting a lot of strings uh, off the paint. So that's telling me if I go any further, it's just going to make more of a mess. Too stringy. So that's a good reason why when I pull this off, just too many strings. It hasn't cured to a point that it can easily kind of shear across the, uh, across the stencil. So let's wait, and I'll check back in our five minutes. All right, it's been another six minutes or so, so I'm going to try to peel this stencil off now and see how the paint looks. All right, yeah. Still not great. Ugh. Still kind of meh. So Obviously, I have a lot of paint on my hands, as you can tell. Overspray or a lot of extra paint uh, seemed to cause me quite an issue. So it really looks like I screwed the pooch on this one a little bit.
Yeah, this did not go very well. I'm gonna try picking up a spot that I touched. All right, well that sucks. I'm gonna go cry, I'll be back in a minute. So what have I learned? Um, I made probably too many mistakes on the little stencils. So let's go, them, let's go over them one by one. Number one, first major mistake, I sprayed way too much spray paint. I think as I sprayed the spray paint on the yellow, obviously that's a lighter color trying to cover a darker color. I sprayed too much thinking I needed to cover, although not realizing when it dries, it's gonna dry and, and bring more of that color out. So when I went to pull the stencil, there was too much paint. It was still kind of goopy. Uh, had not sat as long as it needed to, even though I waited about 17 minutes and you got the strings and the things of that nature that happened on this. So number one problem, oh, really just too much spray paint. Number two, um, I should have covered, even though I had the stencil with the X lined up with the hole, still should have put a piece of um, painter's tape or green tape, rock tape over it. Uh, that seemed to be something that really didn't go well in my degree. Uh, a couple of, you see a couple of the outlines of the boxes that happened there. So another key thing I should probably uh, look at for next time. All in all, I mean, I, this can be touched up. That's the great thing about paint, is a couple, you know, spray paint, a little brush, a little dabs. I can get this back to be 90%. I still don't understand why the valley uh, really kind of crackled on me. Uh, you can see this. I'll pull this up so you all can see. Even on this side, at the same spot, you can see the valley paint really just has this kind of crackled effect. I, I don't know why that is. If we look on the other side, the same thing happened over there. So I can touch up in and around this, but touching up this crackle, I, I, I don't know how I'm going to be able to do that. So I, I'm a little bummed on that. I, I think other than that, uh, this side turned out a little bit better. You can see there's some of those little, uh, you know, ribbons right there. I don't want to touch that. It's still super wet. I, I, but I think, you know, here's... Here is my situation on this pen. Flash Gordon is a really cool game. I like this game. I'm planning on putting it in my basement and keeping it. Is this a big problem? No. Um, I will be the one who always will notice it. If I sell this in the future, so I may point it out. But my games aren't collector quality. There are people that you may see online this is like Chris Hutchins or Brian Kelly, who do an immaculate job. Um, I'm just not them. Again, I'm still relatively new in all things. And especially on this stuff, the art and painting and carpentry, this is so outside of my wheelhouse of what I do from a day-to-day -day side. So I gotta be happy with this. Um, I do also wanna get a, good, a great recommendation that on the pinball cabinet stencils, none of this was the stencil's fault. This is me screwing up. So, the great Nate to know as well, uh, Jeff over at Pinball Pimp Stencils, uh, you can email him, he'll give you some great tips, great guy, he lives down in Florida. Um, he's also been known in the past that if you do screw something up, he kind of helps take care of you a little bit. So, I mean, don't be afraid, uh, just as a non-paid recommendation, definitely check out Jeff at Pinball Pimp. If you've got stencils, you want to make a game, if you want to go collector quality, it's great. Even if you're wanting to clean a game up, make it as nice as this, it's still worth doing. After about 30 minutes of waiting, that I'm going to go ahead and do this just so I can be done. So I've got a um, cabinet here. I'm going to do the top or the front of the cabinet first, and that will help me uh, start on the sides. <laughs>
All right. There it is the front. Clean up my mess. This time, I'll save myself the uh, craziness there and the refinishing later. All right, now time to do the sides. <sighs> so it's late. Um, as you can see, I went ahead and uh, finished it up. Uh, I, I had some issues with this as well. Uh, again, just from a painting perspective, the yellow just seemed to not do as good enough job. You can see also I um, uh, got some issues with some touch up I need to do here as well. So all in all, it, it's been a good project to get this done. I think it looks, I mean, I'll, I'll post a picture right here. Um, you can see the original version of this doesn't look great. This looks much better. So. I'm excited that's done. I'm really tired. I don't want to paint anything else, and I have another machine to do. So, this machine is going to get done. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start putting it back together, uh, working on putting the cabinet back together, uh, and then doing a play field restore next. But I'm calling this done. I, I do not like doing cabinet work, I, I realized. I like the electronics work, either it works or it doesn't. This is, uh, this is. This is a lot of chores for me. So with that, that's going to be the end of our cabinet pinball pimp stencil restore video. I hope you guys enjoyed this as well. If you felt my pain, drop me a line below. If you have any suggestions on how to improve this, I'm also willing to hear those. So with that, see you later.